I have no idea how bonding season one got renewed because it seemed like such a small show that I'm not even sure Netflix knew they even had. So against all odds, Netflix somehow, despite canceling seemingly everything that's good, renewed bonding for a second season. And I'm really glad they did because it's great. So Bonding's first season was pretty good. I thought, I really enjoyed it. All the episodes were about 10 to 15 minutes. It really followed almost this sketch comedy style of just long drawn out scenes with usually a punchline at the end. And the show wasn't necessarily about that much. The characters weren't that three dimensional. Peter was pretty interesting, but you know, again, the show was mostly played for laughs and interesting situations to put the characters in. And, uh, they changed that. Although I gotta say, before we dive in here, uh, what the hell was the first episode of season two? I mean, that episode felt like somebody from Netflix walked in and asked them like, can you make the show more like one of those sexy high school drama CW shows? I don't know, this guy was like a college bro, probably. I don't know who works at Netflix. It felt like, like someone completely different wrote the script. It was the same guy writing all the episodes, but man, that first episode was rough it was for anyone who liked season one that first episode is jarring of season two because it does not feel like it matches the tone of the show at all now the first season of bonding got a lot of blowback from people in the bdsm community who felt that the show played that aspect mostly for laughs and didn't really respect the craft that is bdsm and it kind of feels like a lot of aspects of season two are a direct response to that which i think is great the show took that criticism and applied it to the second season to improve the show's quality overall. One of the ways they chose to rectify some of the mistakes they made in season one was to introduce us to a character in season two named Mistress Mira. In a lot of ways, her character acts as a soft reset button for season two because it starts to shift around certain arcs that they may have set up in the first season and are now repositioning going forward. But overall, her character is great. It sort of feels like right now the show is finding out that it wants to be a little bit something more than just 10 minute sketches, which I'm open to. I think a show like this, in order to really have legs and go on for longer than a season or two, probably did need to shift its narrative. In my opinion, the show is usually at its best when they spend most of the time of an episode on just one scene, and that happens a few times in season two. There are at least a couple episodes of No where an entire scene maybe plays out for about six or seven minutes, which most of these episodes are a little bit longer than season one. They're about 20 minutes instead of 10 to 15, but the show still hangs on to that aspect that made it special, which is these long scenes that allow for character motivations to be more fleshed out and just more room for material. Maybe it's funny, maybe it's serious, but it works because you have a little bit more time to get to everything. One of the best aspects of season two is that the show has clearly found its footing. It's clear now how they want to write both Tiff and Peter. And one of the more interesting things about this is that while they were a bit of a team in season one, rightfully so, Peter works for Tiff, in season two, they don't have nearly as many scenes together. Actually, the majority of season two, these two characters are apart for most of it, which is great because it helps both characters feel a little bit more like real people and less like a sketch comedy duo. Not that that was a bad thing. I enjoyed a lot of the sketch comedy feel of season one, but it's also not a bad thing to see a show like this evolve and find a slightly new direction to go in for the foreseeable future. This brings me to how season two ends, which no spoilers, but when season one ended, it seemed like they didn't really think they were gonna come back. They didn't really give the characters very many loose threads remaining for future storylines. They sort of gave them both a definitive end, or at least one that would have been okay if the show never came back. In the end of season two, they are clearly expecting multiple seasons going forward. And the way they ended the season is fantastic. It makes you want to see more of the show. Season one, I wanted to see more because I enjoyed the show, but there wasn't really any big story elements that weren't answered. Season two is opening a whole new can of worms and direction for the show to go in. But this is also why I'm worried because Netflix has a bit of a track record of canceling shows right when they start to get really good. And while I have no idea how bonding season one got renewed because it seemed like such a small show that I'm not even sure Netflix knew they even had on their streaming service, I'm even now more nervous because season two is really good and they set a lot of stuff up for season three. 
And I'm afraid that we're never going to get to see any of it play out. But hopefully the show does come back because what they have laid out going forward for the future of the show is really, really exciting. It's always great to see a show come into its own in its sophomore season. And a lot of that growth is also manifested in the characters of the show. Thank you so much for tuning into the video, guys. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate your support. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button. It does help more people see my content. And that really means a lot to me. As always, I appreciate the continued support from all my subscribers. Subscribers. You guys are fantastic. If you have any recommendations for things for me to watch, leave them down below in the comments section. That is all I've got for you guys today. I'm out.